Hello wildflowers and welcome to December in a sleepy little town on Australia's wild southeast coast. Here, nestled between the Tasman Sea and the Snowy River, where cows graze in sun-scorched paddocks at the end of every road, lies a little old cottage I've named Belladonna. This year, as always in the Southern Hemisphere, I'll be faced with the annual conundrum of following the Northern calendar and celebrating Yule with the rest of the world, or honouring nature's calendar as the days grow long and hot and we Australians are sizzling in the summer heat. In my last episode, my thoughts wandered to the oil paintings of P. Genet and Von Gerard. These artists sought to capture the spirit of the silent wilderness, their vision of Australia in the Victorian era, with its tea-stained landscapes of golden grass and russet soil, luminous in the Antipodean sun. And so, as I set about decorating the cottage for Christmas, I couldn't help but take inspiration from these artists, imagining what their drawing rooms may have looked like once upon a time. It often feels as though time stands still in this town, so it seemed fitting to choose a Victorian country cottage theme with a pinch of academia. Thinking upon A Christmas Carol, I couldn't help but reflect on how profound Dickens' work really is, and how he captured that familiar feeling of being haunted at Christmas time by the ghosts of past, present and future. Perhaps, like me, you can relate to his struggle as the festive season grows near, wrestling with his inner demons, a troubled childhood, and a bitterness in his heart that he couldn't seem to put to rest. Dickens, for one, seemed to understand that the most wonderful time of the year is also, for many, the most painful. Last year, fighting back tears among the merry shoppers, I took my inner child to the Christmas store and purchased some ornaments and craft supplies for a wishing tree, decorated with symbols of things I dreamed of. Love, friendship, joy and safety. It was a promise to my inner child that I would always put her first and take care of her heart, and I suppose, like Dickens, I vowed to always keep the spirit of Christmas alive within me. I guess that magic spell I wove was powerful enough for this year has brought many wonderful plot twists, surprises and blessings. Christmas in a new town and a new house, with new friends and family. A chance to start over, to love and be loved. A Christmas miracle, if ever I saw one. So, although this is intended to be a light-hearted makeover episode, filled with whimsy and wonder, it is also a message of hope for those out there with a heavy heart this season. A candle in the darkest hour, perhaps, and a promise that maybe, just maybe, your happy ending is closer than you think. First, we had to do something about the hideous charcoal carpet. Not very Christmassy or Victorian now, is it? <laughs> Would you believe the previous owner thought it was a fabulous idea to lay it over a hundred year old hardwood floors? But not without first dropping what seemed like gallons of paint on it first. Oh my gosh, the horror. Revealing these beautiful floors and restoring them to their former glory took some time for sure, but it was ultimately so satisfying. On hands and knees, Mr. Rose and I scrubbed and scraped away the majority of paint, stopping every now and then to high five, 
<laughs> before polishing with oil and vinegar. We tidied up the skirting boards with a fresh coat of white and the restoration was complete. The warm, rusty tone of the timber, which I'm guessing might be Red River Gum, a popular Australian hardwood of this colour, would be the perfect backdrop for a country cottage makeover. Next, it was time to furnish the space. So it was back to the local antique stores and marketplace to thrift the perfect pieces. The first piece I found for my drawing room was this beautifully crafted sideboard buffet with lead light doors and dovetailed drawers. It was listed on marketplace for 200, but I bargained down to 150 since there are a few chips and scratches. I've never been one to begrudge an old girl a few signs of wear and tear, so I'm rather in love with it and think it's the perfect place to display my vintage china and crystal ware, don't you? Okay, you're never going to guess how much I paid for this cute wingback floral sofa. $35. <laughs> I did pay a little to have her steam cleaned because she was a little stained and dirty, but she matches the space perfectly and I couldn't be happier with the colors. The next retro shop bargain was this vintage bar cart for just $25. We have plans for this later. And we took a little detour into the jazz age with this art deco coffee table, which I snapped up at a closing down sale for just $80. Finally, a few vintage botanical prints in gold edge frames from Etsy and the country cottage academia aesthetic was coming together just nicely. You know, wildflowers, I don't think I've put up a big, proper, classic Christmas tree since I was a little girl, something around ooh, 30 years ago. <laughs> and so this year, my inner child is absolutely thrilled because I've met another big kid who is just as crazy about Christmas as I am. We two merry elves decided to go big with an enchanted two metre high tree dusted with snow and wrapped in twinkling lights. It feels just like a fairy tale and I could stare at it for hours. I can't tell you how long I've dreamed of having a tree just like this, covered in magical woodland ornaments and even a jaunty little Christmas puppers that looks just like Noah. Boop! <laughs> Another classic cottage Christmas tradition that dates back to the 1800s is to hang Christmas stockings above the fireplace, of course, one for each family member. And so, although Mr. Rose did his best, tinkering away trying to fix my old sewing machine, it was Mum who came to the rescue this time, lending us her sewing machine for this rather cute and whimsical sewing project. We couldn't believe our luck finding this gorgeous Morris & Co fabric at the local craft basket. The designs date back to 1861 when the company was first founded and celebrate the English countryside, which seemed perfect for the theme we're going for. As always, I'll share the pattern with my wild roses on Patreon if you'd like to give it a go. I always share my craft projects and recipes over on Patreon as a way of saying thank you because I couldn't really do this without you.
Next, it was time to weave a little Australiana into this cottage Christmas with a native wreath adorned with golden glitter gum nuts. In ancient pagan, German and Scandinavian cultures, Yule wreaths were made to honour the turning of the wheel of the year, celebrating the return of the light and the promise of spring. It was something neither of us had ever attempted before, but we sure had a lot of fun learning to be florists with my handy hot glue gun and some floristry wire, even though Mr Rose had a good old giggle at my hot glue gun technique. <laughs> In the end, we were so happy with it, we had to give each other another high five. <laughs> it really completed the look and brought that feeling of the Australian landscape into the home. Another way we wove some Australian magic into our Christmas this year was to wrap our gifts in my very own wrapping paper, featuring native flora and fauna in shades of gold, burgundy and dusty pink to match our chosen palette. I also designed some matching gift tags, which once again I'll upload for my patrons on Patreon. Most of these boxes are empty, filled only with a note. You see, we had the idea to grant each other little wishes for Christmas. For example, I know that inside one of these boxes is a day by the river, picnicking and reading our favourite books. For us, making memories and spending quality time is the best gift of all. After weeks of working on the drawing room makeover, it was finally time to add the finishing touches, lighting candles and creating an enchanted, cozy atmosphere, perfect for snuggling in and enjoying all of those Christmas goodies, watching the lights twinkle in the tree, pouring a glass of sweet tawny and putting on a Christmas classic. Can you work like that? Yeah. <laughs> Now, we don't have a fireplace, nor a chimney for Santa to shimmy down, but we decided to hang the stockings here above the sofa with Noah's in the middle. Voila! Dear hearts, your crafty Christmas elves have finished their work and the room makeover is complete. Are you ready for the final reveal? Well, what 
do you think? Did we manage to capture the spirit of a Victorian country cottage at Christmas time, decorated with hints of the English countryside and touches of light academia, with a colour palette that sings of Australia's silent, sunburnt wilderness? I know, it was a lot. <laughs> and I suppose I had, as always, lofty aspirations of reviving the charm of a bygone era and mixing all my favourite design aesthetics into one. But in truth, sitting back to admire this room at the end, I felt so happy. What existed just a few weeks ago, only in my imagination, had come to life beautifully. It feels magical and cosy and full of promise. And the best part was that we had so much fun together, getting crafty and making memories. And I'm not sure we'll ever have the heart to take the tree down. <laughs> it's far too beautiful. Ah, let's just keep it all year round, shall we? <laughs> With the makeover complete, there was just one thing left to do. Pour ourselves a sweet glass of sticky from that gorgeous vintage bar cart, tuck into a delicious cheesy treat and snuggle up to watch The Man Who Invented Christmas, the story of Charles Dickens and how he came to write A Christmas Carol. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your wonderful comments, for subscribing and supporting this channel over the past year. It has been a dream come true in many ways to see my rambling films making a difference to so many. It is special to see that these little gifts of light we all share from one heart to another are brightening up the world. So wherever you are and whoever you are with this season, May your own dear heart be merry and bright. May your inner child come out and play and believe in miracles again. It's never too late to dream a new dream and keep the spirit of Christmas alive in our hearts.